I was doing some reading on a Weaver style uh, SSB receiver. I'll include a link below. Uh, and I definitely want to build one of those, but I thought I'd do a quick video on the uh, MC1496 modulator mixer that the author was using to uh, do mixing of both RF signals as well as audio signals. The MC1496 uh, balance modulator demodulator dates from the 1970s, I believe, uh, and it's long been superseded uh, by other ICs. Uh, this IC can do uh, amplitude modulation, double sideband uh, with a suppressed carrier, can do product detection and uh, general signal mixing. What I'll be doing in this video is showing the uh, amplitude modulation and the double sideband suppressed carrier as well as mixing two audio signals together. Uh, and that was the original use in the Weaver receiver I mentioned uh, earlier. So let's have a, a quick look through some of the uh, examples in this document and then we'll move on to the, uh, to the circuit that I've pulled together. So uh, this page here has uh, some typical applications and you can see here we've got a balance modulator, balance modulator, demodulator, we've got an AM modulator, product detector where you pass it a carrier and a single sideband input and it'll output the, uh, the audio. Uh, and then it's got a couple of other examples here on a doubly balanced mixer and a low frequency doubler. So as you can see, there's a variety of uh, functionality of this, uh, of this little IC, which uh, is uh, what got me interested in it in the first place. So let's move on now to the uh, schematic that I've created and uh, we'll walk through that. So let's quickly walk through the uh, circuit uh, that I've pulled together here. And uh, so here's the, uh, here's the circuit here. And on the right hand side, let me just pan over to that. This is the actual internal structure of the MC1496. Uh, and you can see it's a the familiar Gilbert cell structure, which is also present in the SA602 series, which is a kind of a later, uh, a later generation of this, uh, of this sort of mixer. Um, so let's uh, have a quick look and one of the big differences between let's say this and the SA602 is the biasing setup for the uh, for the Gilbert cell. You have to set that all up yourself with the external circuitry. And so you can see um, here's the biasing, uh, the resistor divider biasing network on the left hand side here. And the structure is basically what you need to do is provide a descending series of uh, bias voltages from the carrier inputs through the signal inputs and then finally through the bias. And you can see that on the, uh, the Gilbert cell structure here. So the bias voltage, the DC bias voltage at, at this point, the carrier input, has to be greater than the bias voltage on the signal input, which in turn has to be greater than the, the, the bias down here. Note that each of the inputs, the carrier input and the signal input, as well as the outputs, are balanced. But in this config, uh, pin 8 of the carrier and pin 4 of the signal input are both fixed DC. So I'm uh, fixing, uh, fixing those at DC with, uh, by uh, having capacitors tied to ground here. The output is taken from pins 6 and 12, and again, uh, that, that is a balanced output. Um, and the, uh, all you have to provide externally here is a load res either a load resistor or a load inductor. The final thing to note on the, uh, on the circuit here is this carrier adjust pot uh, down here. Uh, and what this does is it allows you to adjust between uh, amplitude mo an amplitude mo modulated output uh, all the way through to a double sideband suppressed carrier output. And it basically does that by adjusting the, um, the DC difference between pins one and four. So with a balanced, uh, when they're both the, the same, the DC, uh, the, the DC voltage at pins one and four, you get the double sideband suppressed carrier. When one or the other of these inputs uh, has, a, has a DC offset, you get uh, amplitude modulation. Uh, just a quick note, uh, W2AEW, as usual, has a great series of videos on Gilbert cells, differential amplifiers, and I'll include uh, the links to those videos below. Great, great watching. Finally, uh, I've got a little uh, transistor buffer on the output here, um, and that uh, completes the circuit. 
So one thing to note with the application examples that you'll see in the data sheet uh, is that they assume a uh, is that most of them actually assume a dual 12 volt and minus 8 volt supply. Uh, the schematic here is single supply though, so you don't need to uh, you don't need to give it that 12 and uh, minus 8. You just need to give it the single plus 12 uh, supply. Okay, so let's uh, walk through a, a quick demo now. Uh, and what we're going to start with here is a 7 megahertz carrier uh, at uh, 300 millivolts peak to peak in a 1 kilohertz modulation tone. Um, and uh, we'll, start with the, uh, we'll start with amplitude modulation. So that involves uh, this pot here, which is uh, just, above, just out, of, uh, out of screen here. Uh, with that pot fully uh, clockwise. So, so in other words, we've got uh, an imbalance, a DC imbalance between pins one and four. Uh, so let's have a look at that uh, output uh, on the oscilloscope. Okay, so here's the output uh, on the oscilloscope. And as you can see there, we've got a beautiful 100% uh, modulated uh, AM signal there at, uh, at uh, seven uh, megahertz tone there. So let me adjust the... Uh, uh, the level of the the modulating signal on on input. So let's, as you can see there, that reduces the uh, the modulation of the AM tone, and then all the way to a uh, hundred percent uh, modulated. And actually, actually, that's a little over modulated there. So there's a hundred percent modulated AM tone. So let's just now change the uh, frequency of the modulated signal just to see that action. So I've gone up to two kilohertz on the uh, on the tone there. You can see uh, that increases the uh, frequency of the uh, the modulated tone uh, in the AM signal. So let's now change that to double sideband suppressed carrier, and uh, that in involves adjusting the uh, the carrier null pot. And you can see there, there's that double sideband uh, suppressed carrier signal. Uh, and it looks very much like the uh, two-tone signal that we've uh, seen in the other videos. So let's have a look now uh, using the FFT function on the oscilloscope. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, uh, at the frequency domain structure of those signals. Okay, so here we are uh, in the frequency domain here. And uh, here's those uh, two sidebands. And here is the suppressed carrier. You can see this, the carrier is suppressed down uh, around about 32 dBs-ish uh, from, the, from the two sidebands. And uh, you can't actually see it here, but this is indeed offset by uh, 1 kilohertz from the, uh, uh, from, from the carrier. So let's change the, uh, carrier, um, the carrier null pot again. We'll go back to a, an AM signal. You can see the carrier is uh, increasing, increasing, increasing up to the point where it's around about 6 dBs above the, uh, above the sideband. So here we are with, the, uh, with an amplitude modulated signal. Okay, so uh, finally let's uh, uh, mix a pair of audio signals. Um, and this was the, the use actually in the uh, Weaver bass receiver. Uh, so I've got what I've got here, uh, what you can see here, let me just stop that so it doesn't jitter around. Uh, so what you can see here is this is a 6 kilohertz tone and a 5 kilohertz tone being mixed together. Uh, and you can see the following structure there. And this, uh, you can see there's this structure here of uh, this, the, this mixed product here is at 1 kilohertz here. Uh, so you should get the 11 kilohertz uh, sum and difference uh, frequencies in the output here. So let's change that. Uh, let's do, a, let's say, a five kilohertz tone, and uh, and let's go down to a two kilohertz. So this is a five kilohertz tone mixed with a two kilohertz tone. Um, now I was hoping that uh, this, this structure here would uh, be a little closer to the uh, kind of the mathematical product, uh, but it, it turned out to to be a little bit different. There's a whole pile of mixing products in there. Uh, speaking of which, why don't we go into the FFT function and we can see the uh, what are those mixing products uh, in the frequency domain. Okay, so here we are in the frequency domain here. And uh, just a reminder, this is a five kilohertz and a two kilohertz tone. And you can see up the top there, here's all the mixing products. So we've got 
5 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz. So well, there's the sum. 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. There's the difference frequency. Uh, 5, minus, uh, 5 minus 2 is 3. Uh, you can see we've got some carrier bleed through there. So let's see if we can uh, reduce that uh, somewhat. I'm just reducing the... Uh, there we go. So uh, I was reducing the... Uh, ch changing the carrier null pot there. So you can see now we've got the sum and difference frequencies in there as the, as the primary one. So let's just change that just, just for fun. Uh, we'll go up to, let's say, 5 and 4. And you can see now, 5 and 4, we've got uh, 1 kilohertz, which is the difference, and 9 kilohertz, which is the, the sum of, of the frequencies there as the, as the most prominent signals. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I, I'd been meaning to play around with the MC4096 uh, for a while, and as you can see, it's a, it's a fun little IC to play around with, uh, effective... Uh, uh, with a variety of, uh, of different uh, uh, frequencies and uh, functions. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, catch you all later.